from San Diego State University and I'm going to show you how to figure out whether you have enough people in each of your cells overall. Sometimes this can be an ethical decision that a researcher needs to make where they want to make sure that they are not um, collecting more data from more people than they need to. This is especially important in different types of research where you might be um, uh, manipulating in certain conditions that can potentially cause uh, risk to people and you would want to mitigate that risk. So you would want to keep your cell size as precise as possible so that you don't um, overdo it in collecting more data um, than you need. So the best way to go about doing that is to use uh, some of these fancy tools that we have available now um, and this one is the power and sample size calculator um, so what I like to do is I go to this website which is uh, www.statisticalsolutions.net slash pss z test underscore calc dot php so that's statisticalsolutions.net slash p as in papa SS, that was Sierra Sierra, Z as in zebra, test underscore calc, C A L C dot PHP. But in order to um, use this calculator, we have to know what to put in here. Um, so I'll start to fill it out and then we'll go from here um, to uh, decide what it is that we need to know for our sample size. So the first thing is I want to right here um, do my sample size not my power and then I get to my first roadblock. Oh no this is the actual mean um, for the population. So a lot of times you're like well how do I know what the actual mean is for the population that I'm studying and what kind of mean is this to begin with? Um, you should probably pick a mean that is related to your dependent variable. So if you uh, are doing a survey on likelihood to vote maybe you have some historical data that says um, you know the likelihood to vote is this particular value. Um, and so you can use that as your baseline mean um, or you could um, base it on uh, part of your population which you have right now. So I'm gonna, I have a data set here and it has I think 12 cells in it. There's a lot of cells in this database. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm not wasting any money um, if I'm paying people and that I have enough people in here. Right now you're like, oh, 568 people. Well, that's awesome. Except that each of my cell sizes are right around about 47-ish um, per group in here. So is 47 enough? Can I, can I stop collecting data? Um, do I need to spend more money uh, to collect data? How, what do I need to do? So in this particular data set, I have a um, variable uh, called um, CC and that is my dependent variable um, that I'm trying to predict in here. Let me find CC one of my new ones. Here we go. CC. Oh, I was already there. Ha ha. Joke's on me. So here is CC and this is what I'm trying to overall um, predict on folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the data set and because I have control groups I know what would happen naturally if there was no treatment or manipulation at all. And so I'm just going to select my conditions um, if that uh, if only the cell, if only the control groups are selected. So if the cell is greater than or equal to 11, because my control groups are, are numbers 11 and 12, um, then I want you to select only that data. So let me make sure that that worked, because before I just did a frequency, and you can see I have all, all of my cells in here but now when I do a frequency on cell let's see what happens okay great I just have the control group so now I have um, focused only on my control group next I needed to identify what that dependent variable is going to be my dependent variable for this particular data set as I mentioned is going to be um, CC 
and I want to get a mean and a standard deviation on CC. I'm going to turn off frequency tables just because I don't need them. So I can see that out of five, my mean is a 2.16. So people have a low CC. So this is the first thing I'm going to put in here. I'm going to make it where I can see them both at the same time. All right. Um, for my mu zero, I'm going to put 2.16. And then down in my standard deviation, this is the standard deviation of my known population. I'm going to put 0.78. Got an extra point in there, so I'll get rid of it. Now, I need to figure out, well, what is the population that I'm actually getting? So this is the known mean. This is no treatment at all. And now, how much do I expect that to be different? Is it half a unit? Is it a quarter of a unit? Um, I could guess, um, or I could go to my data and um, look to see how different these people are. So I'm going to, again, select only the cases um, that are my treatment groups. And so rather than being um, greater than or equal to, I'm going to put less than or equal to cell 10. So this is going to be cell 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 collected in here. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I have the proper cells turned on. So I'm going to do a frequency on cell. Great. I don't see any control in here. So now I'm ready to figure out what that um, mean and standard deviation is now on my treatment group. So this was my control group. I'll actually write that up in here. Control, no treatments. And then now I'll do the same mean and standard deviation for CC on my treatment groups. And I'm going to turn off display frequency tables again. And I see I have a 2.31. All right. 2.31. So these groups are different from one another. I'm going to turn this into a one-sided test. I want my um, p-value, or I want 95% confidence in here. Um, I'm going to keep this at the default. And now when I press calculate, it's going to tell me how many people I need per cell. If you remember, I originally had about 47 people per cell. So let's see. I need 168 per cell. So I'm going to need to keep going on this. I need 168 per cell. Um, so to summarize here on this page how you fill this out, you're going to click calculate sample size. You're going to put your um, baseline, expected, or control group, no treatment mean of your dependent variable here. You're going to put your treatment group or finding or whatever mean of that same dependent variable here. This is your standard deviation for your um, control group for mu1. Go one-sided make it uh, 0.05, make it 0.8, and then it'll tell you what your sample is per cell. So I need 168 people per cell for this to work. So good luck. It's really not rocket surgery, and it will very much help you understand um, whether you need to keep collecting data or if you can uh, turn off that spigot and start analyzing. Enjoy.